So far, this 3D printer is going together very well. Apparently, this print platform will self-level on this machine, and that apparently is a feature not every 3D printer has, and if it doesn't have it, it can be quite annoying. I don't know how the f to do this, man. I'm gonna have to Google it. So I am just read that there's a bug in the firmware for this pad that actually moves that thing off the plate during calibration. How fun is that? So now I gotta fix something. Ugh. I'm not as dumb as you think I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I thought was gonna happen. All right, we're going here. We got it up there, hello up there, hello over there. Let's get into it, dude. If you guys hate styrofoam and plastic noises, definitely don't listen to the next 30 seconds of this video. <laughs> so we've got these aluminum extrusion pieces, which I believe are the uprights. They're color-coded at the bottom, and they are wrapped to bejesus. I do not think they needed to wrap these this aggressively, but I also lack a certain amount of patience. Okay. Okay, I'm assuming there's hardware in this box. Oh, there's a lot of stuff in this box. <laughs> oh God. Power cable, weird tube. Ooh, comes with a putty knife. I think that's to scrape the print off the printing plate. Plastic tube and what looks like a SIM card removal tool. It's just a piece of wire with a loop. Okay, there's this bag that has nothing in it. That's nice. And this bag that has many things in it. Let's see. The bags are labeled, so that's nice. Step one. This is kind of fun. I was definitely a Lego kid growing up. Walker, were you a Lego kid? Oh, yeah. Legos and connects, actually. I was much, much more into connects. A Rector set was a little old for our generation, I think. For those of you that are somehow unaware, I am, Walker and I are millennials. So it's our fault. <laughs> Whatever but it. We still blame you. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the boomers. We always will. The boomers haven't done us any favors, let's be honest. But that's not what this video is about, is it? I need some more M. 25s. Oh no, I need a spring washer. Poo poo. Oh, they're these. Man, am I dumb. I didn't read it all the way. Uh, well, I'll do these right and go back and do the other ones again. Okay, let's set this back up. Did I do that right? Yes. All right, so we have our uprights. Now, it looks like we just take this and put it up here, I think. Oops, I'm doing it wrong. It goes this way. Ah! Okay, we're okay. So far, this 3D printer is going together very well. Apparently, this print platform will self-level on this machine, and that apparently is a feature not every 3D printer has, and if it doesn't have it, it can be quite annoying. I think that's one of the differences between the Ender 3 and the Ender 5. Shout out to Dan Keith out there being willing to make us some files and parts. Stands on our Patreon and Discord, and he and I have been talking a lot back and forth about cool projects. Dan is a 3D modeling whiz, and he's retired, and he just wants to help us out from the kindness of his heart. And I appreciate you, sir, despite how shoddy I am at responding to emails. <laughs> Now, we need to install the material rack, which is this funky thing, and that screws in over here. These are pretty poorly written instructions, but luckily the photos are really good. Okay, so we wanna run all of our cables up here, and it looks like zip tie them. Ooh, comes with side cutters, and a tiny little metal piece. 
Look at these little side cutters, that's nice. Pull all that up. Nothing touches the ground, nothing drags. Yeah, first printing after this message from our sponsor. Okay, in all seriousness, here, how about a backlit shot, huh? So I've got my laptop, I've got a uh, power run to the machine, I've got a USB card reader for some reason, don't need that. I've got the cheapest looking eight gig SD card I've ever seen. And the instructions say leveling. Please follow the steps of auxiliary leveling, auto leveling, Z-axis compensation for leveling. Please refer to the attached electronic instructions for specific leveling steps. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just do something crazy. I'm gonna open this tablety thing and see if this is how you control it. The Creality Sonic Pad. Boy, does that have a strong smell. That is weird. It's got a sensor, plug, there's a lot of stuff in here. Of course, this has to be plugged in too. Jesus. Here's this. It's got, there's the back IO. It's got an ethernet port for LAN, somewhat for some reason. USB, a CAM bus, and a sensor plug. It's got these little feet that flop out. Surprised this thing's not battery powered because this little tablet thing is not cheap. I should read the instructions. Creality Sonic Pad user manual. Okay, we've got logoage booting up. Might as well turn the printer on too. Some things are happening. Hey. Okay, input language is English. I have not read it, but I'm pressing next. It's got this cute little poppy sound. Set your region. There's so many regions. America. This touchscreen feels terrible. Denver. So I have to pick America and then, is there Virginia? I guess, let's see. Nope. <laughs> what the hell? Puerto, there's Puerto Rico, but no, this is so weird. There's like five places in Indiana. I guess this is just for time zone. So I'm just gonna go with New York. No, good God, this is terrible. <laughs> this is the worst interface I've ever used. New York. Okay, next step. Jesus. Connect to my Wi-Fi. I'm not gonna show you that because you guys are creepy. So now I pick which machine I have, which is the Ender 5 S1. Insert the card reader into the position shown. Okay. All right with the card inserted. Okay, card is inserted. Now I flash the firmware. USB stick was not detected and the operation could not be performed. Okay, oh wait, it's the right place. It says right there. Firmware has been written to the memory card. Please insert it into the printer. Make sure the printer is switched off when inserting it. Okay, turn that off. Pull this out, put this in here, upside down. Okay, next step. Please power on the printer and click next. Next step, connect the printer to the screen terminal using the USB port. I did that. Gosh, I'm sorry for the glare here, y'all. It's connecting. It's because this is still turning on. No sign of life yet. Wakey, wakey. Hello. Okay, here we go, the self-test. All right, the self-test will start. Please ensure the Creality Sonic Pad is properly connected. Here's hotbed surfaces clean. Yep, self-test will take about 30 minutes. Test yourself. Hot end fan is starting up. Please check if the fan is spinning properly. The fan is spinning properly. That is tr correct. 
Next step, please check that the hot end fan is turning properly. If it does not start properly, please check the manual or... Yeah, I mean, the fan's running. How many times do you want me to check the fan? Next step, print cooling fan is starting. Please check up the fan. Oh, there's different fans. Okay, I'm the asshole, sorry. There's a fan on the side somewhere? I don't know, on the back? Oh yeah, there's a fan on the back. Okay, sure, yeah. Next, okay. Please confirm that all hotbed screws have been tightened to the maximum. Oh, okay. Okay, tight, 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 tight. This one's still not tight. Okay, now it's tight. Okay, so they're all tight. Whoa. Axis homing. Oh, Z axis is coming up. Z axis is going up. It's gonna touch that little probe there, I'm guessing. Yeah, this is one feature on the five that the three doesn't have. Used to have to, apparently you used to have to do this manually. Nice. So it's gonna go around the table and get a reading of how far away it is. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Probe calibration. Select travel distance. I don't know what this means. This doesn't mean anything. It's 4.96 millimeters away from the Z axis. Okay. What am I supposed to do with that information? I don't know, man. I don't know how the f to do this, man. I'm gonna have to Google it. Shout out to Ricky Impney for helping me figure all that out. <laughs> oh shit, don't do that. You need to move down, buddy. You're slamming into yourself. This is very difficult. Once you're happy, move to the next step. This is where we'll create a bed mesh. If you say so, I'm gonna go get a feeler gauge because that's what you need. All right, I've got a set of feeler gauges and I've got this one out. This is 0.102 millimeters, so I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna just get closer first. So i am just read that there's a bug in the firmware for this pad that actually moves that thing off the plate during calibration. How fun is that? So now I gotta fix something. Oh. So we're in here on a Saturday, and this thing sucks. <laughs> no, it's frozen on error 202, which I'm, must be the error that, uh, it, yeah, it punches itself in the head. <laughs> Shelby's friend who runs a whole 3D printing lab was telling me to have it back. Well, yeah, he said this one is notoriously bad. So thanks, Creality. <laughs> yeah. I see what you think of us. Uh huh. Turn this off again. Um, leveling auto. Well, just sort of. None of this makes any sense. So it finds X, finds Y. It's got its own little probe that comes down. So we're like, okay. Doink. And now it's like, I'm gonna cram into myself. Like, what? <laughs> I'm gonna throw this thing away. <laughs> Welcome to the future, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, you got, your jobs are safe. <laughs> the, ro <laughs> the robots are not taking over just yet. I'm sure there's a solution here because it's really just a, a, a processor with, you know, a collection of motors around it, like it's standard CNC stuff. But the fancy tablet doesn't do anything helpful. And I've run several firmware updates from different dates and not one of them has um, done anything. Well, this is the last Saturday of mine I'm wasting trying to mm -hmm. figure this out. I'm gonna try the newest firmware. Yeah, 
just to say I did it. A head massage. <laughs> yeah, Z will work. Mm -hmm. you, will, you will use your Z probe appropriately. <laughs> Use your, use your Z probe appropriately. <laughs> I mean, the hardware quality seems nice. Yeah, it seems like it should be more than capable of doing its freaking job. But the so it's all software right now, I think. But mm. I even got cool gold filament I was going to do some fun stuff with. Okay, new firmware version, 1.0.7. Oh. <laughs> probe is down. Table's probe coming up. engaged. Probe engaged. Mm. Probe. Probe engaged. <gasps> oh. <gasps> oh. <laughs> Almost. There's like an indention now where it's slammed into itself. Let's try auto leveling. What if that works? That'd be cool. It scares me when it moves quickly. I know. <laughs> It's not running off the edge anymore. Look at this thing go now. It's almost like they spike. I take it all back. Yeah. Some of it mm. back. <laughs> Still should be a lot easier than this. <laughs> well, technically I made it like that. This, this has been the root of all evil so far. This fancy tablet that's supposed to basically be your new interface for the machine. But it's also supposed to help you easily guide through all this stuff. Yeah, have yeah. this like auto setup. You shouldn't have to call in a professional. Mm -hmm. Who then goes, hey, those tablets are garbage yeah. thrown away. He said everyone who's bought one of these has regretted it. Here you go. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, so it's creating a bed mesh now. Uh, okay, there's no like completion screen. It's just uh, like, press the back button. Uh, all right, are we satisfied? Or uh, <laughs> uh, I'm nervous. <laughs> Is it level? Should we just try to print something? Yes. <laughs> at this point. Yeah. How do you know when it's at the right? I saw it go. You see it there. Uh. And it stops. Okay. So. All right, good enough. I'm guessing. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe it just knows now how the table looks, so it knows how to print. Are you a Mac person? Yes. Oh. Uh, I didn't realize that. Everything makes sense. Now. Yeah. <laughs> Is it this one? Yeah. Literally what your video was titled, you cunt. It's the power supply. See it exists. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm not having fun. Part of me just wants to cut to the end of this video, being you throwing it off the roof. <laughs> I'm fine, then I can get on with whatever else I was doing. <laughs> yeah. Well, here goes nothing. Time to be happy and excited. I'm here at the shop on Wednesday and I'm playing with, playing is, makes it sound like it's more fun than it is. I'm trying to figure out how to use our newly procured 3D printer. I updated the firmware on the machine itself. It has the most current firmware, 1.0.7. And of course now I'm trying to print, which means I need to figure out a bit of software called a slicer. And a slicer is, it's a post-processing software, not dissimilar from uh, the software I have for my CNC machine. But the slicer, I'm using Prusa Slicer 2.6 and the slicer needs to know what firmware type I have. Not what firmware number, but what firmware type. Some of the names of a firmware type include Repetier, Teacup, Marlin, Clipper, Sailfish, Machine Kit, Smoothie. I don't know what these mean. So to find, I've been all over Reddit trying to find out how, well, how I find out what type of firmware I have, other than what number it is and part of the process may include trying to open up the bottom of the printer to get a look at the main board. If you figure out what type of main board you have, then you can get the right firmware for it. I'm looking in all the places I'm being told to look for the type of 
the, the version, the chip version and the type of main board. And uh, there's no information on any of this stuff. So this is a cry for help, a desperate cry for help before I punt this whole thing off the roof and watch it explode in the street. What, how, why, and what, and huh? <laughs> in any case, I don't see what mainboard version I have, but none of the numbers I see correspond to any of the numbers I should be seeing based on Reddit. If anyone knows, any 3D printer people out there, there's one person watching this, so this isn't gonna be helpful. <laughs> no offense to that one person watching this. I'm gonna end this live, and this can live as a video, and then people can comment later. You wouldn't happen to know what type of firmware comes preloaded on a Creality Ender 5 S1 3D printer, would you? Oh, 14 niner. Oh, okay. That makes a lot of sense. I thought it was a 13 One fuck. We can give it to the machine <laughs> after. I have one fuck to give. We're good, it's detected print stability issues. Like, why would anyone watch me struggle through this when like there's so many people online that do this well already? People like suffering. I, I don't. <laughs> I do plenty of suffering elsewhere. <laughs> worthwhile suffering. What I would like to do is have someone who's a 3D printing expert go do my actual job for a day. Go be a welder. Good luck. Actually. And, and receive nothing but complicated instruction. Mm -hmm. Incomplete instruction the entire time. That would be funny. Not a bad video idea. Yeah, but all 3D printing experts this is, this is now a call-out video. Oh, well, heating up the bed. I mean, I don't know if the bed's level. It says it's done the auto leveling. Mm -hmm. I literally just put the coin in the middle and click slice Slice and then export G-code. And also, my start and stop G-code uh, has come from a complete random person on the internet. So, yeah. <laughs> so tired of this. It is getting warmer. Yep, the bed temperature Very is warming slowly. up. Very slowly. I'm guessing that's the goal, so why, why does it think the nozzle temperature goal is zero? Maybe it'll spike up the the goal after the bed hits its target? Well, that's optimistic thinking. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're giving this machine far too much credit. I definitely am. <laughs> you guys wanna see my sweet new watch? Hey. We could, we could match, here's this. You have the same one? Yeah, uh, I think similar, Not maybe not the exact it's same. like 21 bucks on Amazon, yeah. it's so good. Yeah. Screw your smartwatch. I don't know if it, I have even calibrated the Z-axis properly. Like, it might just start squirting plastic from way too high off the bed. If it squirts any plastic, I'll be happy. <laughs> yeah, <no> shit. <laughs> right now the nozzle is room temperature, so in fact, it's gone up a degree because the bed is heating underneath it and the heat is rising <laughs> into the nozzle. Oh, see, there it goes. Oh, okay. See, it hit the... Oh. Okay. Oh. Click. Start G code. Home, reset extruder, move it up, move to start position, draw the first line, move to the side a little, draw the second line, reset extruder. That's the first line. It's supposed to be printing. Is it? 
don't know. Sure would seem like it should be. <laughs> Definitely not printing anything. <laughs> nope. Is the plastic not fed all the way enough? Uh, in the thing. Good. Uh, the good part is it's, it's a quarter of the way done. Oh, here comes the plastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I thought was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think it was fed through. <laughs> So shitty. <laughs> <They're good. laughs> exactly what I wanted to happen. We could just do this as a cry for help, like, hey. Yeah, well, that's what I'm th like the video title. Tell is me just everything like, I did wrong. Yeah, this video is a cry for help. Was the title yeah. of the video? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> oh no, it's gonna dip the nozzle of the plastic. It's got bad things are about to happen. <laughs> Uh oh, <laughs> it's coating the nozzle. It's actually kind of cool to watch. Yeah, but it's moving faster than I thought it would. Uh huh. It's probably because I have it set too fast. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to show off our first 3D print. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just smooshing in there. <laughs> Oh, oh, the whole thing. Oh boy. <laughs> I can't wait to like sell this on the website. <laughs> Do you want to buy Liftark's first 3D print? <laughs> you know, on the upside, it is vaguely coin shaped. Yeah. <laughs> also, is the bed like not warm enough for the initial plastic to like? It sure does seem that way, doesn't it? Hold to it. <laughs> <laughs> They're just dragging it all over. Hey, see our first hey Aaron, we're 3D printing experts. <laughs> this is just such a fun <laughs> Oh, that's great. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> Can you tell what it is yet? <laughs> we are so bad at this. Um, I uh, texted me, Bruce. I, I'd say that's probably a reasonable plan. <laughs> it's just, it has no idea where it is or oh, where gosh, it's going. Oh, just off in nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, the coin used to be. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where the coin should be. <laughs> Look at it. Is it writing the fuck now? Uh, sure, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> the good news is it's 61% complete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm fine ending the video here. <laughs> yeah, I think we say like, great, thanks for the awesome printer. I really appreciate this, you sending it over. I'm, I'm really thrilled with how easy it's been thus far to get here, and I can't wait to see it prove itself as an asset to our shop. Yeah. <laughs> Look, it's just tracking it around. <laughs> Dude, this plastic all melted to the, to the nozzle. Probably fucking the tip up. Probably. There oh, it is. Done. <laughs> oh. There it is. Can't you tell? Let's see what it's supposed to look like. You know how, like, to a parent, their child is always uh, beautiful, <laughs> even if it's the ugliest creature on this earth. This is what it was supposed to look like. I mean, I see it. <laughs> <laughs> There was, it printed okay for a split second, look. Yeah, before that, it started dragging, I think. Well, my Z offset was so bad, it was way too far away from the table, so it was just squeezing the toothpaste out of the tube. <laughs> All right, well, let's pretend like that's the end of the video. Pretend, that is the end of the video. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, all right, because I'm not as dumb as you think I am. 3D printing offers an incredible service to the prototyping, engineering, and fabrication world. I understand that thing, I'm sure, is capable of doing some nice prints, and we'll get there. As much as I wanna throw it off the roof right now, we'll get there. I, for instance, Chop Saver, Sidekick, Plasma Cutter, I bought that machine because you can plug it in and go. Yes, there was a little learning curve, there's always gonna be a learning curve, but the learning curve on setting one of those up to do a good job is literally you have to take a crash course in Jeep coding. Mm. Like, 
Uh, and I don't have the patience. I have work to do, I have other things to do. So, yes, I get it, everyone's busy. If you're watching this right now, know that I have it within me, if time was not an issue, to fully absorb that whole process. What I would prefer instead is to piggyback off of somebody who just loves 3D printers and is passionate about it and has it all figured out. I will compensate you. I will, I will pay you uh, for your time to give me all your settings or help me set up, set it all up, give me a walkthrough because, yeah, there you go. Well, that's, I'm gonna get off of my soapbox now. This will be great. It does not feel great right now. And that's the end of the video. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'm sure you turned it off before you got here. <laughs> uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah, like or don't. <laughs> I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>
albeit it was free, thank you Creality for sending this, I was already frustrated with the firmware issues and the collision issues and the, the I mean, you know, I've damaged now the print plate because it ran into itself because of an improper Z-axis calibration. An automatic calibration from this thing, by the way. It was not my fault. Nope. But I do think your uh, earlier point uh, still stands of like, you got a Shop Saber because it's turnkey. Uh, it is exactly why I went with Shop Saber. <laughs> Cor corporate chilling, <laughs> corporate, corporate chilling. chilling. Uh, that is why I went with Shop Saber because I wanted to have a machine that was built, assembled, just needed to be plugged in and ready to run. This is not that. It's admittedly not far from that, but it isn't that. First off, you have to assemble it, which is not hard for someone like me. Maybe it's not hard for you, but if you have zero mechanical experience, it, it, it's not easy, not super easy. That to me though still was the easy part. The hard part was the calibration and the initial setup. Leveling the bed, setting the Z-axis offset right, doing your file, exporting, updating the firmware. If for some reason your unit's been sitting in the warehouse forever and has old firmware, you know, they sent me this automatically, this tablet that's supposed to basically replace that screen with this nicer touch screen that, you, that helps you run things. Uh, this thing made it worse. The, the commands this was giving that resulted in all that damage on the bed plate. So, you know, someone may have bought this thinking, oh, it'll make my life easier, and then they have the same experience I had going, well, that sucked. <laughs> so get rid of that, use the built-in screen, you know, make sure you have the nice firmware. I mean, so you have to have some computer knowledge, some basic knowledge about motors and CNC, three-axis machining, and some general common sense to kind of work through this thing, you know. I happened to be in an old machine shop, so I had this feeler gauge. They do send this piece of paper that's meant to be the offset spacer between the nozzle and the bed plate. But, you know, I'm not a dumb guy. I like to think I'm relatively smart. It still took me a little while to get through it. Mm -hmm. We did it! I heard. We did it! And here it's a big long story. Yes. Yeah. So, we're here. And we officially made our first part. And it's extremely nice. I, I, I can now imagine that we've exposed ourselves to the, the fervent 3D <laughs> printing community mm -hmm. in a uh, rather eventful way. <laughs> <laughs> so let us know in the comments what you think. Let us know. Show us. If you want to engage with us, definitely look into our Patreon. That gives you access to our Discord and you can drop pictures and tips and we can talk 3D printing. Show us what you've made. Ideally, if you're a metal worker, show me how you've, or a craftsman or woman in general, how you've integrated a machine like this into your shop life. Have you made tools, jigs, clamps, spacers? That's what I want to use this for, other than uh, now I know how to make Christmas gifts for all my friends and family. <laughs> uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Shout out to Creality. Go to creality.com, check out all their stuff. They have a 3D scanner. <laughs> reality that I'd love to check out. Uh, reality. Uh, but they also sell a lot of filaments, cool colors and different material filaments for their printers and that kind of stuff. Thanks for watching. What a ride. <laughs> like, subscribe, comment. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.